Hello, and welcome back to Advanced Animation Application, the show where we learn about animations and stuff in regards to Unreal Engine number four. Today, we're gonna to be learning the very core basics of animation uh, from my perspective. And in this video, we're gonna be using the Mr. Mannequin 1.4 Blender add-on, which is available for free in the description. And I'm also not gonna be teaching super specific things. So we're not gonna look at how to do you know, a sword attack animation from the right to the left with this degree arc of swing. It's just going to be the, the core basics. So let's jump straight in. So we've started a new session, just the default Blender session. We're going to kill the camera viewport. We're going to kill the light. Maybe we'll show mercy on the cube for once, but then we're going to hit shift A. We're going to go down here. And if you've installed Mr. Mannequin correctly, we should have the Mr. Mannequin template. Straight up. Now this is a beautiful rig. Thank you very much, Jim. Now down in the left corner, you can choose whether you want to use the standard mannequin. All of these are rigged to the Unreal Engine default skeleton, but I prefer the Epix female mannequin. It's a lot more anatomically correct than this mannequin who's got these giant shoulders that I think 99% of us don't have because we're not bodybuilders. Right, and then just click anywhere, it'll close that menu. Now, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the Object Properties panel. We're gonna cycle through these buttons, which are gonna show all of the joint types. So we do only just want this, the IK targets, and this. So if you hold Shift, you can select both. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click up here to Animation, and we're gonna have our Animation Timeline down here. Now, I don't really like this window, so I usually push it off to the side and just use it as a an alternate angle to see things in motion. Before we get started, we need to make sure we're in Action Editor, and we're going to click New here, and this will create a new action, which is like a new animation, I guess, in Blender. So we're gonna name this one Wave 1. We're gonna hit this little shield icon, which is just gonna double check that this animation is always saved even if it isn't in use by anything. So the first thing that you need to know when we're learning about animation is how to set a keyframe. So we're going to click A, which is going to select all joints. Then we're going to hit the letter I and we're going to get this list of insert keyframe menu and we're going to go location and rotation. And what this is going to do, it's going to say, okay, all these things were at these points when we hit the keyframe. So now we've got that stored in data. And then if we were to go, you know, 60 frames ahead. Okay, so now Mrs. Mannequin has her hand up in the air and her elbow out this way. Now, what I usually recommend is when you're doing your key poses is to select all the bones again and do a keyframe. So what we're doing is we're going between the first and second poses. That's all animation is. And it's super easy when you're using IK targets because the IK is what is being animated and the rest is just following along. So we have these two sort of key poses, I guess we could call them, but we can add individual keyframes to singular bones if we want in between these. So maybe at frame 20, we want this hand to be doing this and then we can press I without selecting all the other bones location, rotation, and then at 40, maybe we want it to, I don't know, do this, location, rotation. Then if we were to add, you know, something, uh, maybe we want the, the hips to move over here and then do this. And then you can see that these are all out of sync with one another, all doing their own thing. So if we press A now, you can see that in our summary, we have keyframes set here and here and here for something. And if we look down, you can see where these keyframes are set for each individual IK target thingo. Okay, so we just learned how to set a keyframe with Mr. Mannequin or just in Blender in general. Next thing we're going to talk about is a little bit of, I guess, animation theory. We're going to talk about easing and inertia. So if we jump back into our scene, we're going to just use this hand again as an example. Just something really easy where the character waves at us. Okay, so we've got Mrs. Mannequin set up nicely. We're going to select all. We're going to hit I. 
and do location rotation. Then we're gonna move, maybe we'll go like 10 frames ahead. And we're gonna grab the hand, we're gonna move it down to here, rotate it. Um, it's always good to, whenever you're animating something, to use your own body as a reference. So, you know, I'm waving like this and my elbow is always pointing downwards. So it, even if it feels a little bit stupid, it's always good to just stand up, get up from your desk. If you're doing like an attack or something, just act it out and take note of what everything's doing in relation to each other. I'm not gonna do it now because I'm wearing pajamas, but you get the point. We're gonna get our elbow, it's gonna face downwards a bit more and we're gonna select all. We're gonna hit location rotation. And then with all our bones selected, we can click in here and actually copy and paste the keyframes if we wanted to. So now this is going down and then it goes up. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit A we're gonna select everything and then down here we hit shift E and we can hit make cyclic. And this is going to loop this automatically for us. So the reason that you wanna make sure that you're using a cyclic modifier for your, your keyframes, because the keyframes by default are using some easing. So you can see at the first frame, this moves just a tiny bit, but then by this frame it's moving much further. So by making it cyclical, this keyframe here is going to take the beginning of the animation into account. Now, if it is set to be cyclical, it will only export the keyframes that you've actually put in. It's not going to keep going on forever and blow your computer up. Now, this animation looks pretty bad and it is not acceptable unless you were, you know, making a, a particular MMO with the Unreal Engine. So what we're going to do, we're going to explore inertia in order to make this look a lot more appealing. First thing we're going to do, we're going to select this hand and we're going to go one, two, three, maybe th three, four frames in. Uh, let's go five, halfway between these keyframes. And we're going to rotate it this way. And then we're going to click I, we're going to click location rotation. And what it's going to do, it's going to make it look like this actually has weight to it and that this action is actually being performed by a human that has to generate their own momentum as opposed to it being dragged along by someone's cursor from point to point and then keyframe, which is, you know, what we're doing. And then conversely, five frames after this one, we're going to rotate it back this way a tiny bit. I'm gonna chuck in a keyframe. Basically, when we're doing something like this, you want to make sure that everything is going in sort of circular motions. Because in real life, you know, it's impossible to instantly change the direction of something. And it's always a sort of redirection of force. Um, so one thing that we're going to want to do, just to make life a little bit easier, is to go to the editor type. We're going to go to timeline. And we're going to click this little record button. Now, what this is going to do is that whenever we move something, it's going to automatically add a keyframe. So if I was to go back to our action editor, so we go dope sheet, action editor. So we were on this frame here of which there are no keyframes set. And I decided, hey, I want this to actually be here on this keyframe. It will automatically set a keyframe rather than us have to explicitly do it every single time. So then it would do, you know, something real jank. That's why we've got auto insert keyframe on. So now what we can do is just scrub through this and find where it's a little bit janky. Um, I don't like this bit here. So you can see the elbow is sort of locking itself and going bleh. So what we're gonna do is probably bring this keyframe in a little bit of the hand, like such. And then maybe like here, we actually want this to like fully lock and do this. So there's a little bit of a flick. There we go. So we've created a, a very static arm waving animation that looks like it has a bit of inertia to it. We've basically utilized a sort of trailing method. So you get your key poses first and then you go in and like, you know, halfway through each key, you make sure that everything is kind of trailing behind uh, the direction that it's moving from. Obviously, you don't want to go too far with that, otherwise you'll get into, uh, I guess, dangerous territory where everything looks like it's made of spaghetti. We could do the same thing if we select all of these finger knuckle bits. 
We could do the same thing with the fingers, which might look kind of nice. So if we go to frame five here and we just rotate them all around that way a bit and they're going to auto keyframe, which is nice. And then here and then maybe here we want them to sort of just flop out a tiny bit. So you can see now these fingers are now trailing behind a little bit more. Now, one thing that kind of bugs me with this current animation is that it's kind of, uh, it's slower on the way down than it is up. So what we can do is just select from here to the end and wherever our timeline is, let's click S and we can actually scale up the animation. And so that will just stretch it out. So one thing I've been doing a lot for my keyframed animations, just to make them a lot more realistic and believable, is select, you know, your hand or something, and then select all of its keyframes and right click the keyframes. And in handle type, we're just going to set it to automatic. Now they are set to auto clamped by default, but you can see now this looks way, way smoother and, you know, has more inertia just straight away. So we're going to go into paint and I've got it in a uh, paint MS Paint Dark Mode Edition. Basically, if we had a keyframe here, and one here, and one here, then Automatic Clamped is going to say, okay, we want this to do this, and then it has to reach this point, and then it has to reach this point and do its thing. Whereas Unclamped, it's gonna say, okay, you know, just, do this, but don't even worry about hitting this. You can overshoot it if it needs to. So if I was to go a few frames ahead here to, to this point, uh, maybe we'll go a little bit lower and we will put this elbow target back there. And we set this to not be clamped, so handle type automatic. And we'll set this one to be automatic as well. Then you can see that this actually sort of gives itself its own inertia and it overshoots where we specified for it to go. So basically using auto unclamped is a very nice way to sort of easily give your animations a bit more, a bit more oomph. All right, so we've got this waving animation and it still looks like garbage. Even though the arm itself looks fantastic, the rest of the body isn't moving. So this is what I like to call stiffness. So if I was a human person and I was waving like this, like big motion and stuff, you can see that my body moves back and forth as my, you know, center of gravity, point of balance shifts because I'm, you know, big, a big lever. I don't know, just physics shit. I've got no idea. But basically you can see that the rest of my body unintentionally is moving when my arm moves. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this hand and we're going to delete its middle keyframe and we're going to change its first keyframe to be down here and then we can copy and paste here to copy that pose then what we're going to do is as this arm goes down the body will be at its most side sided sideways and then as it goes back up it should be about here and we're going to copy that and put that at the first frame so that these match up Straight away, this is starting to look better. Cool, and then what we can do with this target here is set it to unclamped automatic, and it will, you know, give itself a bit of bit of momentum. Now, one thing that's kind of bugging me is this looks a little bit out of sync with the motion. So what we can do is just move this keyframe. So maybe we want it to, let's try two or three frames before. No, that doesn't look right, so maybe let's try it a bit after. There we go, that looks better. Now, the reason that I'm leaving the hips and the legs and stuff unchanged is because an animation like this, we'd probably only want to be playing on the top half of the skeleton, so that, you know, you could play this animation while your character's walking or something, um, or you could play it while they're running, although it would look a little bit funny unless you're using a running additive, but who knows. Now, one last thing I wanna do before we export this is actually rotate this damn shoulder up and then put that there. Sweet. There we go. Much better, much better. Cool. Okay, so now it's time to export this. So what we're gonna do to export this, we're going to just select everything, make sure we've got the action selected or the animation selected that we wanna export. 
Uh, we're going to go File, Export, Mr. Mannequin FBX, and Export Actions. We are going to untick Start and Keyframes because that will force it to export 0 to 250. You can batch actions and export every action that you've got in your action editor, which might be handy if you're doing, you know, a big set of animations. But otherwise, we are just going to click OK. I believe that exported. Then what we're going to do is just drag our animation in here. We're going to tell it, hey, we're using the Unreal Engine Mannequin Skeleton. I don't think there's any other settings in here that you'll need to worry about. We're just going to click Import All. And then we have a look at it in here. And you can see we've got Anim Man just chilling. And, you know, he's waving. Looks fantastic. Uh, and just as a little bonus, what we could do is get a blend, layered blend per bone. Put the base pose in here. The blend pose is going to be wave one animation. Uh, and then in the branch filters, we're going to go spine 01, I believe. Not pelvis. And now if we hit play, we can see that our character is always waving. Good on ya. He's just chilling. And you know, we can run around into the forest. And, uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's a very happy lad, that's for sure. And as the sun begins to rise, we are still waving. And the sun should come up. Yep, there's beautiful, beautiful sunrise. Fantastic. Yeah, a fella loves to wave. So, that sums up animation 101 in Blender using Mr. Mannequin. Next time we'll be looking at how to do a walk cycle. And then after the walk animation, which will be an in-place animation, like a treadmill animation, we will do just like an attack animation or something that's more root motion. Um, so then I can show you how to deal with, you know, walking and keeping the feet in place and that kind of thing. But this isn't going to be a series about how to make a run animation, how to make an attack animation, how to make a punching animation. Like it's, it's just going to teach you the core concepts and then you can apply them to do whatever you need to do for your project. So as always, make sure that you like and subscribe if you want to keep up to date with future videos and to help get these videos out to people that, you know, might want to watch them. And if you do enjoy what we do on this channel very, very much, uh, oh, Lady Cat, you're on the, you're on the keyboard, mate. Lady. Hey. Ah, 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 no, no, no. What are you done? Would you just... No, I don't need Google Chrome help. Ah, 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 stop it. Relax. Thank you. If you do enjoy what we do here on the channel very much, you can check out our Patreon below if you'd like to support us monetarily. And if you need help with anything Unreal Engine related or animation and Blender related, jump into our Discord below. We've got 24-7 support all around the world and it's growing at an explosive rate and it's very active and everyone's very helpful so with that we say goodbye goodbye and s let me do the thing darling let me do the thing with the tail huh and so with that we say goodbye <laughs> have a kiss Skidichi, skidich, skidich. Big scratch on this side.